Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy, and today, doing something a little bit different on the channel, I have a couple whiskeys here that were created with cigar pairings in mind. It's the Dalmore Cigar Malt Reserve coming in at 44% ABV, and the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend coming in at 59.35%. This is batch 35. Both of these whiskeys created by their master blenders with the intention of pairing them with a cigar. So, can we answer the question, are these whiskeys actually better with a cigar, and are they different than any other whiskey that you would normally drink with a cigar as well? To answer this question, I'm gonna smoke a couple cigars, pair them with the whiskeys, and see what we get. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I've kind of gotten into smoking cigars and pairing them with whiskeys a lot more recently. Um, kind of got into the hobby and kind of ran with it uh, very aggressively, I would say. Um, so this is what I'm gonna do. I have two cigars uh, in front of me. One I would say is more on the mild to medium body cigar, and the other one I would say is more medium to full body cigar. So kind of like a range of flavors out of these two that I think that will pair pretty well with both of these whiskeys, and we'll see um, what one works better with maybe a stronger cigar or maybe a lighter cigar, something more mild, something more bold. So the two cigars that I've chosen, first off, is the more uh, mild to medium one, in my opinion. Uh, it is the Drew Estate Under Crown uh, Shade. This one, I would say, um, very nice, easy smoke, um, very kind of like Cuban-esque. I get kind of like that grassy kind of hay uh, aspect going on with it. Lots of like creamy notes, um, some nice oakiness uh, to it as well. And I'll get into some more notes as we go through it. But Drew Estate, definitely well known in the cigar world. Their Undercrown line, uh, definitely well reviewed. And on the more uh, medium to full one, going with the EP Carleo. This one is the Pledge Prequel uh, Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year in 2020. Um, this one, really nice on the cocoa aspect to it. Nice, dark, rich flavors and uh, I think that it will pair uh, very well with both of these whiskeys. I'm familiar with both of these cigars. I have had them a couple times before. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one cigar and smoke it, pair it with these two one day, and then the next day I'll go to the other cigar, pair it, and see um, what I think. Um, let's get into these whiskeys real quick. Just quick review on tasting notes, and then I'll come back and give it a whole synopsis uh, of what I think these should score with and without pairings, and if there's maybe any other whiskeys out there um, that would pair well with cigars in general. So let's get at it. The Dalmore Cigar Malt Reserve. This one is aged in American and Oloroso sherry casks, and then it's finished in Cabernet Sauvignon wine casks. Um, like I said, 44% ABV. Let's see how it is on the nose. Yeah, so very like elegant, dessert forward kind of nose here. Nice rich nuttiness. Uh, you get like that kind of fruity uh, aspect to it. I say like a strawberry kind of drizzle over dessert. Very prominent. Um, like chocolate chunks, like chocolate chunk cookie. There's like a fig, apricot fruitiness uh, that goes around with that strawberry. And a very like wafery kind of cookie note as well. Very nice on the nose. Um, it's very like elegant, uh, not too um, forward. It's very approachable and uh, very nice. Let's go palate. So all those fruit notes carry over. Strawberry jam, raspberry drizzle, very, very nice on the palate and on the finish. Maybe a little bit of like black cherry coming in now. And I definitely get that wafer, chocolate wafer, chocolate fudge wafer. It's almost like those uh, chocolate wafer cylinder dessert cookies right here. Um, I get that and it's very, very delicious for sure. I think where this one loses points for me um, is on the finish. Very thin, um, finish not very long. I'd say it's kind of like medium, maybe even like short to medium on the finish and definitely uh, thin. It definitely thins out, kind of dissipates. All those nice rich notes um, are very quick to disappear from the palate and there's kind of like this drying oakiness that I'm not thrilled with uh, on the finish as well. Very drying. Um, it's, it's unfortunate because I think it, it takes away a lot of the experience out of this whiskey because you're getting very, very nice notes all the way through. And then on that finish, just coming up a bit short for me, um, I think at 44% ABV, 
which is a little bit more than Dalmore usually pairs some of their line at. I think it needs to be more. I think that they've cut themselves even a little bit short doing it at 44. I think this one uh, definitely needs to be a higher ABV. And, uh, you know, Dalmore kind of known for their chill filtering, their added color, which I'll get into later when I do the recap about uh, how you can tell that this is chill filtered and added color. So overall, I think it is a very delicious whiskey, uh, just coming up a little bit short on the finish for me. Um, I'll get into scoring when we come back for the recap, but now let's go to the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. All right, so like I said, this is batch 35 coming in at 59.35% ABV, nicknamed the Nutcracker. Uh, this is straight bourbon finished in Armagnac, Sherry, and Cognac casks. Let's see how it is on the nose. So right away, hit with a huge uh, peanut brittle note. This is very, very uh, distinctive peanut brittle. It's like jumps at you at the glass for sure. Um, lots of like nutty characteristics to this. And I think the, the nickname, the Nutcracker, kind of plays along with that. Um, walnuts, almonds, peanuts, uh, for sure, all kind of forefront. And then there's lots of like elements in this that are kind of more subtle and in the background. I get this um, dill kind of note. There is a kind of a rose petal floral aspect to it that's really interesting and uh, like a cologne, kind of like a men's kind of cologne, like a muskiness almost to this as well. Very interesting. Very uh, uh, different profile than anything I've had from either Joseph Magnus or Bourbon in general. Really nice baking spices, spiciness on here as well. Uh, very, very enjoyable nose. like it a lot. Let's go palette. So again, those nutty characteristics, that peanut brittle, definitely carries over um, to the palate, to the finish, very long, drawn out finish for sure. Peanut butter chocolate, um, you know, you get almost like that, that Reese peanut butter, not as sweet. I would say it's like if you took a Reese peanut butter cup and took out, you know, like half the sugar, kind of reminds me of that. Um, fruitiness aspect comes into play on the palate, prunes and figs for sure. I would attribute that to those wine casks finishes, that sherry cast finish is bringing out that red fruit. Um, again, like a really nice coffee note, a little bit of leather, um, a very soft oak and some soft spices kind of finish off uh, and round it out. Very nice and complex, really nice whiskey, very drawn out finish. Uh, it brings boldness to it on the finish for sure. I wouldn't say that it's overly hot, but it lets you know that this is pretty much 60% ABV. Gives you that Kentucky hug for sure. Uh, this is a bourbon drinker's bourbon. Um, very, very enjoyable. I absolutely really uh, like this one. It's got a lot going for it and a very unique profile for sure. So those are the two whiskeys that I'm gonna be pairing with these cigars. First off, I will go with the lighter cigar, the Drew Estate Under Crown Shade. Um, let you know what I think with both of these whiskeys. And then in the following day, I will do the EP Carlio and uh, let you know those as well. And I'll come all back and do a recap, see what I think, give you my thoughts. Um, we'll talk about what these two whiskeys do with these two cigars, what these cigars will do with other whiskeys, and kind of like a general oversight of what I think about pairing whiskey and cigars. Stick around to the very end. I'll give you a little humidor tour of what kind of sticks I got going on right now. Uh, so stay tuned. All right, so I'm outside. I have both whiskeys poured. I'm doing, first of all, the Drew Estate uh, Undercrown Shade. So this will be the first one I smoked today. Uh, it's kind of an overcast day here in Toronto, but it's still pretty nice to have a cigar outside. It's got the Ryder Cup on in the background. It's gonna be a good day. I'll get this cut up and uh, take some notes and see how this one compares to these two whiskeys. All right, just about five minutes in. Uh, decently snug draw, pretty decent, burning pretty well. Um, no, it's uh, very like creamy, kind of like nuttiness, a little bit like toast going on with this. Um, it's got kind of like that little bit of hay, a little bit of grassiness. Kind of rem reminds me, it's the kind of the profile like you get in a uh, Cuban cigar, that grassy nuttiness, a little bit of spice in there as well. Uh, really nice and mild, uh, great, great stick, really good. A um, couple more puffs and then I'll start pairing with the whiskey. All right, so nicely into the first third. This thing is burning really, really nice, and I'll double focus on there. Just razor sharp burn, really, really good. The draw uh, it was a little bit tight at the beginning, but now it's like really perfect. Um, so starting with the Dalmore, um, of course starting with the lighter of the two whiskeys. 
So, so far, um, these are going together pretty well. The nice spiciness in here, I'm getting a little bit of like pepper, of course, uh, nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon, just very faint, bringing out maybe a little bit more spiciness to this whiskey. Um, the light body of the cigar, the light uh, finish of the whiskey, going really well together, I think. Um, I'm not sure if I'm pulling out too much more out of the Dalmore that the cigar is helping along with. Maybe a little bit of spiciness, but not too bad. Uh, but so far, the pairing is uh, very, very nice indeed. So on the retrohale, a little bit of like whipped cream. I get a little like, um, hay, kind of straw note from this. I mean, again, that burn line, really, really good. Double focus on there. If I stand here. Really, really nice. All right, I'll keep working on this and move over to the Joseph Magnus. Um, I know that these are not the ideal lighting conditions because I'm in shade and you know it's lighter out there. Sorry about that, but it is what it is. The Joseph Magnus, this is way more my speed. This whiskey is pairing really, really nice with this. So the sweetness of the bourbon, bringing out a little more sweetness in the cigar. Uh, really interesting. Um, the spiciness, the brown sugar note in this really being highlighted with the cigar. Um, absolutely loving this combo right now. Really, really nice. Definitely prefer it to the Dalmore uh, so far. We'll keep going, see how it turns out. Yeah, so maybe even like a little bit of the leather note in the whiskey being highlighted too. Um, really good combo here. So the ash just fall off um, almost to the halfway point before the ash came off. Really nice construction on the cigar. Really impressed with it for sure. The creaminess of the cigar, even more pronounced with the pairing. Really good, really impressed. All right, let's put this thing down and uh, we'll go with one final analysis of both the whiskeys. All right, so into the final third of the cigar. Again, it's burning just immaculately, perfectly. Um, you know, this Joseph Magnus really, really working well with the cigar. Um, can't say enough good things about it. This is definitely more my speed. Um, I do kind of prefer bourbon with cigars uh, for the most part. And yeah, this is just working super well together. Really liking these notes. Going back to the Dalmore now though, my palate from the cast drink bourbon, pretty uh, tainted, I'd say, going back to this. Yeah, the Dalmore, pretty thin, pretty light, um, but yeah. So I think the clear winner with this cigar, definitely the Joseph Magnus, um, just working really, really well together. Can't say any good things about this stick. Really, really good cigar. Really like it quite a lot. Uh, so there you go. Definitely prefer the Magnus with this. Uh, be interesting to see what the EP Carlio has to offer. So I'll set this up another day and smoke that cigar with these two whiskeys and see how it turns out. Cheers, guys. Hey, what's going on? Back out of here this time with the EP Carlio uh, Pledge Prequel 2020 Cigar Finishados Cigar of the Year. I really like this one quite a bit, so let's get it cut up, try it out with these whiskeys, see how it compares up. All right, getting into the first third of this, um, really like the cigar quite a bit. Nice notes of cocoa, uh, coffee, there's some earthiness in here. Really good, bold, rich flavors with the Dalmore. Working well with the fruity notes in here. Um, I'd say that the cigar may be a little heavy for this whiskey. The finish on this seems very, very uh, short and uh, very thin for sure. But um, overall, not too bad. I just think that maybe this is a little bit heavy for it on uh, first go around here. Try a little bit more and uh, see where it takes us. All right, so a little more into it now. Really nice burn. The draw on this is really, really good. Perfect draw, absolutely. Burn, pretty straightforward, nice and even. Um, nuttiness and leather coming through with the cigar now. Working well with this, uh, the Delmore. Those, com those notes complement each other pretty decently. But I'd still say that the finish on this, very, very thin now, almost uh, very short, almost non-existent. Cigar definitely overpowering the whiskey, um, making the finish very, very light. Um, but overall, the notes are pretty solid. Um, I just think that, you know, lighter whiskey, heavier cigar, not meshing um, perfectly balanced together, but still no really complaints. I mean, 
still pretty solid for sure. All right, uh, I'm gonna move on to the um, Joseph Magnus. I don't know if there's really much more I need to say about it. Um, clear winner for me. Very, very good on both aspects. Some good notes coming out of here, but of course, the Joseph Magnus for sure the winner. Um, just pairing the notes, just complement each other that much more. Um, the strength of this, again, holding up the strength of this. The strength of this is pretty much full. The cigar is just coming into its own right now. It's just so delicious. Um, but again, the complement of the Magnus bourbon with the cigar, just a clear winner for me. Um, I'll go back inside, kind of collect my thoughts, um, tell you what I think about these two uh, with cigars, and if there's anything else that pairs well with cigars as well. Kind of my general thoughts. Um, so see you guys inside. All right, so in conclusion, I would say that both cigars I smoked are excellent. If you're looking for something a little more mild to medium, the Undercrown Shade, absolutely great cigar, highly recommended. If you're looking for something more on the bolder side, I know the EP Cardio um, Pledge, absolutely fantastic cigar as well. So definitely recommend both those cigars um, pairing with whiskey. I thought that the heavier cigar didn't quite work as well with the Dalmore, the light profile, almost just the cigar overpowered the finish on this, the finish was even more unexistent than it was without the cigar. The lighter cigar did uh, pair okay with it, I would say. Um, moving to the Joseph Magnus, I thought both cigars worked really, really well with it. The Joseph Magnus kept up with the heavier cigar and the lighter one uh, complemented the flavors just as well. So I would say that definitely the Joseph Magnus um, cigar blend does pair well with cigars, no doubt about it. The Delmore, uh, unless you're smoking a very, very light cigar, I would not recommend this with, uh, with anything heavier than that. Let's score these whiskeys without the cigar pairing. So just on its own, the Delmore Cigar Malt, um, like I said, I thought there were some really good notes in there, like the profile, um, but it loses a lot of points for me on that finish. The finish is very thin, um, it's very short, you can tell that this needs more ABV. I think the 44%, which they went with, um, I think they did that for a reason because probably this at 40 um, was not very good at all. Um, I would love to see it higher. I mean, I think you almost probably need this at 48 um, to make it something where it's like that, that uh, viscosity is kind of turned up. I think the chill filtering on it is an issue as well. Um, if you want to know about chill filtering, check out my video I did on why uh, distilleries chill filter whiskey. You can definitely tell. Uh, put a little bit of water into a glass, uh, see if it stays just as clear as it was before. That is a good indication that a, chill, that a whiskey is chill filtered. And some of those really like nice heavy oils that carry a lot of flavor have been stripped out of the whiskey. I put a lot of emphasis on the finish of a whiskey, so that's kind of like the lingering uh, effect that you have. Um, so for me, score-wise on the Dalmore, I'm going 85 out of 100. Again, I think it's pretty good. Uh, it just loses a lot of marks for me. Um, on that finish and on the viscosity being really kind of low. But other than that, I really enjoyed the profile overall. Um, let's talk value for this. So this bottle, not ex not cheap at all. Um, this one costs $200 Canadian here in Ontario. There's not much savings on this if you shop elsewhere for it. I was kind of looking around um, US. If you look at total wine, it's about 150 US dollars. That's kind of equivalent in price um, out east or sorry, out west in Alberta, you know, you're looking at maybe 20 bucks, 30 bucks less. So very expensive whiskey for what you're getting, in my opinion. Um, Value-wise for me, I'm taking off two marks. I'm bringing this down to 83 out of 100. Let's go on to the Joseph Magnus. Um, really, really enjoyed this Magnus for sure. Um, really like the profile. Uh, very, very different than what I was used to with other Joseph Magnuses I've tried before. Loved the peanut brittle note in this, uh, the complexity of the flavors the boldness, really liked how all of it came together. Nice and strong, definitely a bourbon drinker bourbon, and one that is definitely um, holds up with cigars as a pairing. So score-wise for me on this one, I'm going 90 out of 100. Now let's talk value. I paid 170 US dollars for this. This one, um, definitely hard to find. It's definitely one that is not on a lot of shelves for very long. Um, a lot of people have to go to secondary market for this. I think the secondary market's not too bad. Maybe looking at a, maybe an extra 80 to $85 or so if you're picking this up on the secondary. Uh, if you can find it at retail, definitely go for it. Um, I think it's definitely worth it at 170 US compared to other bourbons and what you're looking at, even at secondary market prices, at that secondary market for 250, 
I would still say it's a recommended buy. You're getting a profile that's very, very different. Um, it holds up very well. And if, if you are a bourbon enthusiast, I think that you will absolutely like this one. So 90 out of 100, and I'm leaving value at zero, which means I think the price is justified for this bottle. Now talking generally pairing cigars with whiskey, I don't think that, that whiskey designed to pair with cigars is any better with a cigar than just your regular favorite bottle of bourbon or scotch or whatever it may be. I think pairing, uh, in my experience, which has been quite short, um, I find that a lighter cigar kind of pairs well with a lighter whiskey. With a heavier cigar, you can go with a heavier whiskey, and they're not going to conflict the flavors too much where one outshines the other. I'm not saying that you can't uh, have a, a heavier whiskey with a lighter cigar or vice versa and still get enjoyment out of it. You definitely can. I just think that if you want a balance between flavors, uh, one not uh, overpowering the other, Lighter with light, heavier with heavier, seems to kind of work in my opinion. I think if you want something comparable to this, um, that's more affordable and more available, I think the Aaron 18 year old is a great sherry whiskey that pairs very, very well with the cigar, especially that EP Clario, I've tried that before, it was excellent. Something like an Abelour Abuna, I think pairs really, really great with the cigar too, if you're looking for a nice huge sherry bomb. Uh, Glen Alecky 12 year old is a favorite of mine, and even the 15. Actually, probably I'd say the 15 would be a great uh, sherry scotch to pair with a cigar. I love the sherry notes in that, very, very good. Even something like a Glendronic 12 year old, I think would pair great with a cigar as well if you're looking for that sherry profile. On the bourbon side, um, one of my favorite um, bourbons to pair with any cigar is a Booker's. Go find your favorite batch of Booker's. I think it pairs perfectly with cigar. Even the Joseph Magnus, the regular release, just as good with cigar in my opinion. Um, you don't need to necessarily get these cigar blends. Um, they don't pair better than, let's say, your favorite bourbon or favorite scotch with a cigar, in my opinion. So there you have it. Generally speaking, I would say it's very, very personal preference of what pairs well uh, with cigar as far as whiskey is concerned. I think it just is uh, whatever you like the most, try it with a cigar and uh, you might find a new favorite pairing. All right, now a little look into my humidor. Uh, I keep all my cigars in a cigar fridge, temperature controlled and humidity controlled, of course. Um, kind of a few boxes in there, but I'll just show you kind of what I got loose in my main humidor. Some of these cigars that I'm showing you, uh, I say that I haven't tried yet. I've since smoked them. Um, excellent stuff. Really like most of the stuff I've had so far. So check it out. All right, so this is my humidor. This is what I got currently going on here. I'll go through a few of the sticks, not all of them. Um, let's start over here with maybe uh, my everyday um, smokes. This is the uh, Brickhouse Double Connecticut. Really good, easy smoking cigar. Um, really nice notes of like whip, um, whipped cream and uh, some oak notes on this. Really good stick. Uh, you can get these for a box. 25 costs you like around 110 bucks US. Um, so really good. Also, one of my nice everyday Cigars. I think this is absolutely great value. It is a H. Upman um, by A.J. Fernandez. Absolutely incredible complexity to the cigar. It's got great spice, leather notes to it. It's got really nice like uh, vanillas, some coffee in there. It's got it's got it's pretty much got it all. Um, you know, for I found a box of these on sale for 99 U.S. I mean, you cannot go wrong with that for you know five about five dollars a stick when you buy it in the box price. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. Really, really highly recommend that cigar. Um, let's go to some big boy sticks. Um, uh, Palencia, this is the Alma Ferte. I uh, haven't tried anything from uh, from them yet, but I've heard amazing things about them. I love the um, the shape of this stick. Um, this one will be smoked pretty soon. I'm really interested to try this for sure. Um, yeah, you guys probably spotted that. Little Pappy Van Winkle cigar. So these are made by uh, Drew Estates. So we'll see how they are. I've never smoked one of these yet, but stay tuned. I will be doing a video on the Pappy Van Winkle cigar paired with Pappy Van Winkle bourbon. See if the pairing works out. We'll see. Um, Davidoff, um, super luxurious cigar. This is the late hour. Um, haven't tried this one yet, but I've had other Davidoffs and they've been just super creamy, super enjoyable, You're high class. Uh, enjoyable smoke. Um, Cuban, I do have a Cuban. I only have one Cuban cigar right now. This is the uh, Partagas uh, Series D number four. Uh, I do have a box of these. Although 
they were um, they were rolled up uh, in March of this year, so they really won't be that good to smoke until the springtime. So unfortunately, I kind of got to wait on that box. Um, but here's one I won't be waiting on very long. Uh, my father, the judge. Absolutely love uh, everything I've tried from my father so far. Haven't tried the judge, but I've heard just incredible things about it. So super pumped to try that. Um, can't go much further without talking about this. Big shout out to um, to Mike from Malt Reviews for recommending cigars to me. Um, this is the, of course, Opus X Angel Share. This is the most expensive cigar I've ever purchased and I ever have. Um, you know, these are a three pack cost you 110 US dollars, you know, over 30 bucks a cigar. So, uh, Mike, it better be worth it. <laughs> he, uh, he assures me that it is. Um, but I'll have to, uh, I just got these, so they'll have to sit in the humidor a couple weeks to kind of climatize themselves before I get at it. Um, here's my only Lancero. Um, Olivia Series V, the Milanio. Um, lots of hype around this cigar for sure. I've smoked a couple of these. I think that they're really good. I think that they're overhyped. Um, I like them, but uh, you know they find their way on the Whiskey of the Year list pretty much all the time for cigars aficionado. Um, and again, I think they're great, but uh, not as hyped as they uh, as they normally are. Um, Hoya de Nicaragua, Numero Uno. This is a great, great cigar. Uh, again, but overpriced in my opinion. This is what twenty bucks a stick. Not worth it at all. Uh, can't have a whis or a cigar collection without something from uh, Perdomo. This is the twentieth anniversary. Um, this is the. Moderno wrapper, uh, yeah, absolutely stuff, uh, good stuff. I love Perdomo cigars. Their quality is just so good, and everything I've had from them has been excellent. Um, getting over to some of my favorite stuff, again, another recommendation, Mike and Narby, uh, the Padron 1926 uh, series, really awesome cigar. This thing is just pure amazingness. This is the Moderno. And then uh, over here, I got some other um, Perez stuff. Some Alec Bradley, Lost Art, there's a Tempest down there. Uh, those are just remnants of the pack I got before. Oh, over here, a little uh, Rocky Patel. Gotta love Rocky Patel stuff. Sun Grow Moderno, uh, really, really good cigar. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I got going on right now. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, the cigar collection. Cheers, guys. All right, that's gonna do it for me. If you have a favorite cigar pairing with a whiskey, leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to know uh, what you guys are enjoying out there and suggestions for myself to try out. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, join me for my next review where I'll take a Pappy Van Winkle cigar and pair it with Pappy Van Winkle 20-year-old. See how that turns out. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Really much appreciate you watching. Have a good one. Cheers.